Good evening, everybody. This is your co-host. Joey's on his way to pick up his wife, and I hope he doesn't have any traffic problems with the turned over 18 wheelers, but he said he's going the back way, so he should miss all of that. Hopefully. Hopefully. Hope everybody's doing well, and we thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, Joe, you're the 4881 number? That's me. Gotcha. Hello, everybody, and greetings. Hello, Joe. Hello. From, from, uh, from the, the wild outback of Asheville, Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all need to calm down in Asheville. Y'all are too wild. It's uh, uh, the country. Wild animals. Is all this. Uh, other than that, it's pretty peaceful. Here. Be careful you talking about Mary Jean. Yeah. No. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. Well, my wife Mary and her mother Mary are uh they're they're a handful, that's for sure. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is what it is. But it used to be anyway till you said that. <laughs> well, I know I know Pat and Nora are are partying in Pigeon Forge. That's true. Uh, I, I I I check the uh, mug shots every morning for from Sevier <laughs> County. I haven't seen them yet, so evidently they haven't been arrested. All right. Yep. They gave up a long time ago, and they just let them go. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the week ain't over. <laughs> That's right. The week's not over. It's kind. It's kind of funny. I can talk about it since they're not here. Yeah. You know, we go, we go by Western Sizzling, and uh, I look across the street and I tell Mary Jean, I said, "You see Pat's car over there at the ABC store." <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> uh, that's, uh, she joined the Baptist though. I, I I enjoy giving Pat a hard time about that. She's 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 uh she's fun to to joke with. All right. Uh, well, okay. I was hoping we'd have a few more folks on with us tonight, but hey, guess what? Uh, we're going to make the best of it. I'm thankful for all of y'all uh, being here. Um, and uh, I just, uh, I want to open this with a word of prayer. If you would just uh, bow your heads. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful week of weather that we've had. Uh, we thank you for the cool, crisp feeling in the air. A little bit of relief from the oppressive heat of the summer. But Lord, we, uh, we're thankful for every day uh, that you give to us. And Lord, I just ask that you would just be with us tonight and uh, help us to gather something good uh, from, uh, from our study tonight. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, just a few things. Just remember to pray for Joey as he, as he uh, drives uh, through Birmingham on Talladega weekend. Uh, week or week, Talladega week, uh, but uh, just some folks uh, I want to mention on the prayer list, Billy Phillips, Stan Phillips' dad uh, from Southside has been in the hospital the last few days, and uh, he is, uh, was supposed to be released this afternoon, Stan was going down to be with him tomorrow. Uh, so let's remember uh, Billy Phillips uh, is, is he tries to feel better. Uh, I think everybody knows, but if you don't know, uh, Harold Potter is over at uh, Gadsden Healthcare over by the Gadsden High School, it's Gadsden City High School. And uh, I talked with Mr. Potter yesterday, and when I talked to him, he was having a really rough time. 
did not talk to him today, didn't expect to hear from him today. Uh, so he's got a long row ahead of him. Uh, so uh, let's remember him. Of course, let's remember uh, uh, Max Little, uh, Jeff Blackwood, Helen Mitchell. Uh, they're in uh, healthcare facilities and uh, heard a little bit of good news yesterday uh, about them letting visitors back in, although it is qualified visitors. And the qualifying deal is the, uh, from what I understand, is the infection rate being under 10% or being 7% or something like that. I think, I think it's under 7%. Right. And, uh, so that's still causing a problem. Uh, Melody Whitaker, uh, Kurt Morris, uh, David Mitten, John Mitten, uh, Katie Bailey, Madge Robinson, Linda Farley, Joe Nichols, and of course, Pat and Nora traveling back from the, the great white north of Tennessee. Uh, are there any other folks? Well, I guess everybody's muted, but oh. um, we, that's all right. We'll go back to, uh, we'll, we'll open up for prayer requests at the end. Okay, I talked to Mr. Potter yesterday afternoon after you did, and he was feeling much better. Well, that's good because when I talked to him, and, didn't sound good. Yeah, he, he said he had a real rough morning, but he said when he got out of therapy yesterday afternoon, he was ready to walk to Gunnersville and back. That's just what he, how he felt. He said, I feel a whole lot better. That's a blessing. That's a blessing. Sure is. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, Jerry, I guess you're the only one unmuted. Well, you're not unmuted anymore. I just didn't know if anybody had any days that they wanted to do. And if you don't, that's fine. I'm ready to do them all. I can help you out with it if you'd like. Just, I, no, you, you take one if you want it. I do Sunday the 27th. Sunday. I lost my place here. There we go. Sunday, the, okay, so that's day three. I'll do day two. You'll do day two. Okay. There you go. Okay. So I'll do day one and then we'll turn it over to Sherry and Jerry. Okay. Day one uh, is lasting beauty. And the scripture is uh, from famous chapter Proverbs 31 verse 30. And it says charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. And the devotion says, my life has not been the same since my breast cancer diagnosis. When I look in the mirror, I do not like what I see. I feel like I have aged 10 years. My hair is short and receding, thin on top, and speckled with gray. My eyelashes and eyebrows are barely visible. It is difficult to find cute shirts or dresses during the summer because I only have one breast. I was not prepared for the permanent change that chemotherapy and a mastectomy have caused. But throughout this journey, people have been watching me. They weren't looking at my physical changes they were walk, watching my walk with God. My strength that comes from God has been encouraging to others. Though my walk has not been easy, it is comforting to know that my faith is helping others. Like most people, I want to look appealing to myself and others. But while circumstances and age have changed my appearance, I am learning to look beyond my physical imperfections. I may look different on the outside, but my desire to please God has not changed. Beauty fades, but my relationship with God will last throughout eternity. And the thought for today is today I will seek to see Christ in myself. And that's from Sherry Pickett from California and the focus is women with breast cancer. Let's bow our heads. Dear Lord, 
help us to maintain a strong relationship with you through tough times for our, for our good and the good of others. Amen. <clears throat> you know, reading this uh, devotion, uh, I can't help but confess it made me feel a little bit uncomfortable just because it was hard for me to relate. Uh, I, I just, it's just hard for me to understand uh, some of the feelings that she was trying to describe. Uh, but I thought that, uh, that this was a really uh, great devotion uh, because she chose not to focus on, on her problems, but focus on her relationship with God. And, and, and I think for me, uh, and I'm just speaking for myself, that uh, this was a really uh, great reminder to me of how we should all be living every day of our lives, setting a good example, because whether we realize it or not, people are watching. And, and I can tell you that if you uh, affiliate yourself with a church or a religion or a denomination or a certain faith, uh, they're watching you through binoculars and a microscope. They're watching everything that we do, hearing everything that we say, looking at every uh, expression on our face in how we're dealing with people. So uh, I, just, I just thought it was a great reminder, if for nobody else, for me. So uh, that's all I have for day one, and I'll turn over to Jerry and Sherry. Okay, Saturday, September 26th. Title is Be Open. It comes from Mark chapter 7. Jesus looked up to heaven and with a deep sigh said to him, Apat, yeah, okay, what is it, Mary Jean? <laughs> if, okay, which means be open. That comes from Mark 7, 34. He finally got you. He did. Got me that time for sure. At a recent parish retreat, we were asked to share a personal story about a profound experience that taught us something about ourselves. The story I first thought of, of telling involved a deep healing experience, but certain details connected to my experience were too intimate, so I chose to share a different story. Fear and shame had censored me. I was worried about what people would think if they learned such intimate details about me. Then someone else told a story that was similar to the one I had been too afraid to tell. I ended up wishing I'd had the courage to share my original story with the group. Who knows what further healing might have come had I opened up and entered a more vulnerable space as this person had done. God wants us to move beyond our fear and shame. God wants us to live openly, honestly, into the fullness of who and what we are, who God created us to be. That means entering a space of compassion and vulnerability the way Jesus did. Often, it is in those moments of raw, unabashed honesty that God speaks and moves through us most powerfully. And the thought for the day is, God calls me to share my story with honesty and courage. That comes from Jennifer Hudson in Connecticut. And the prayer focus is for courage to share my story. Let us pray. Oh God, help us to open up our lives to others who want what is best for us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You know, that uh, this open up and, and tell and be honest and so forth, I think that's one of the hardest things that I have to do 
and I think it's because of what people might think. I've seen it happen when you when you're honest with others, others concerning other people, and it just kind of makes you skittish as to as to what you want to say and whom you want to say it to. Uh, sometimes you just really got to be careful what you say and hope for the best. Amen to that. And I will relinquish the microphone to my better half, Sherry. Sunday, September 27th, no unimportant part. The parts of the body that people think are the weakest are the most necessary. That comes from 1 Corinthians 12, 22. I recently joined a church choir. At my age, I can no longer hit the high notes, so I switched from singing soprano to the lower range of alto. At first, I envied the sopranos who often carry the melody. Their clear high notes are the most noticed sounds in our choir. How impressive it is when they hit a high G. Meanwhile, I sing the more subtle alto tones that I hardly used to notice. I changed my perspective, however, while listening to a recording of our latest performance. I realized that every vocalist has an important part in a choir. While the altos don't normally carry the melody, our voices add an exquisite harmony that enhances the choir's performance. Like altos, many church members perform roles that seem to fade into the background. Some collect donations for projects, others serve on committees that plan special events, some stock the kitchen, still others ensure that the lawn is mowed. No matter how minor they may seem, all these jobs are important to the life of the church. Whatever talents we have, we can use them not to receive applause, but to focus on doing our part in serving the God. The thought for the day is my role is important to the church. Let us pray. God of all voices, help us to perform our part of the work to the best of our ability, knowing that we are serving you. Amen. That's from Lou Full of Love in Texas. Our prayer focus is choir directors. Mm -hmm. and this really spoke to me when, because I, I was thinking about our first Sunday singings and how many different voices we have that come together for our first Sunday singing and everybody sings and gets up and sings and, and Mr. Potter leading our singing and he loves to do that. I, I hope he gets back to it. We all get back to our first Sunday singings, but and Joe, you've said this so many times that things in the church just seem to get done. You know, we don't have to have a long meeting about things that happen in the church. It we just get it done. Our first Sunday night singings after we have that, you know, we go back there for dinner. We always have plenty of food. The kitchen's well stocked. You know, we always have what we need. And that's because we have so many people, everybody in that church contributes something and it just all comes together. And I think that's a beautiful thing in that church. The alto voice in this, this story right here kind of brings back uh, memories of the, and it's been several years because a lot of the family members have died out and are unable to sing is the Kernut family reunion that they always had in August. They had one of the best alto sections I believe I have ever in my life heard. When they sang their part, it was outstanding and really, really brought chills to the souls listening. They were really a talented family. I'll second that. Any discussion? Okay, let's take a vote. Oh no, that's something else. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I would. Uh, I just thought it was funny, Joey, seconding that after <laughs> annual conference on Saturday. Uh, Sunday, I mean. No, it was Saturday. Uh, I had written here uh, to do this one last. And, and I thought it was interesting that Sherry wanted to do it. And, and it's, it's perfectly fine not to do it last. But uh, uh, 
you know, like everybody else, I, I really felt like this was uh, a reminder to us uh, of, of our church and just the way things get done. And, uh, you know, talking about our Sunday night singing, we go back to the fellowship hall and, you know, and it's just food everywhere, people everywhere. And then uh, when we all leave, uh, 8 30 9 o'clock on Sunday night it's back just like it was before we left before we got there and uh, Jay's always uh, worried to death about me taking the trash out and and I miss that and uh, I, but I always remind him that, that, that I don't get paid to take the trash out and that just that just blows blows his mind I said, I said, it's Jerry's turn to take the trash out. <laughs> so, but anyways, you know, we, we, we all have our roles and, and, and we all have our place. And uh, it's, it's just, uh, it's just perfect on well, that title. There are no unimportant parts of the church. Uh, everybody plays a role. And I'm so thankful. And surely, it surely takes up the plates. Yeah. <laughs> Bless her heart. She missed her calling. <laughs> she, she'd be in the bus boy hall of fame. All righty. I guess we'll, uh, we'll move along, uh, to day four, Monday, September 28th. And, uh, the total, the title is hope for the world. And the scripture comes from first John five, five, it says, who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. On September 28, 2018, a 7.5 magnitude earthquake hit the Indonesian island of Sulawesi, triggering the tsunami waves of nearly six meters and inflict, inflict, inflicting a death toll of more than 2,000. Many more people were missing. I cried, oh God, how many more disasters? Each time people perish in a natural disaster, I feel pain for this world. As I was feeling depressed by the aftermath of the earthquake in Sulawesi, I attended a worship service at my home church. The speaker for the day read some of today's reading from 1 John which says that we shall overcome the world if we keep our faith, believing in our Lord Jesus Christ's victory. Relief came upon me with, with hope that Jesus will rescue us. The sound of weeping, weeping and of crying will be heard no more, from Isaiah 65, 19. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, Revelation 21, 4. These words calm me and bring me peace. The world is suffering, but we have hope for the future when we trust God and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's from Kong Peng Sun from Singapore. And the thought for the day is God's words can comfort me through suffering. And the focus is on victims of natural disasters. Let's pray. Dear God, comfort us in our present suffering and pain. Help us to have faith in a future with you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Of course, this uh, made me think about uh, uh, the hurricanes that have hit uh, the U.S. this year, uh, the terrible damage down in uh, South Louisiana, uh, Sally that hit the uh, Alabama Gulf Coast and uh, have friends who live down there, family who lives down there. And, uh, you know, it's, it, it's real easy when you see the pictures uh, to just kind of just stop and say, why, God? It's... Uh, saw some pictures today of a neighborhood that looked like people had just taken 
all of the furniture and their appliances out of their house and just stacked them at the edge of the road. I, I mean, it was just incredible. I mean, it looked like it was every piece of furniture out of every house. Uh, it was, uh, uh, I, I don't know, it, it was moving to me. It, it really kind of, kind of bothered me, but A lot of people had it tough. And, and, and you know, the, the thing about it is, is there are people who live like that every day around the world. And uh, just, it's just a reminder to me of how blessed we really are. Okay, moving on to day five. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, it's a sacred pause. And scripture comes from Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28. And Jesus said, come to me, all you are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. I'm just here to tell you that we could uh, talk the rest of this hour until we all fall asleep tonight uh, about that one verse right there. But the devotion says, <clears throat> when my children were young, I homeschooled them. Lunchtime was usually my first break of the day. At noon, I gathered everyone to eat. We held hands to pray. But as I bowed my head and spoke thankful words to God, my mind sprinted ahead. Eat quickly, put away the dishes, ready the afternoon lessons, begin dinner preparations. On one especially hectic day before I prayed, I consciously took a slow, deep breath. I relaxed my shoulders, I cleared my head, I prepared my heart to be thankful to God for our food, our children, and all the good in my life. It was a sacred pause to recognize my shortcomings and God's ability to provide. My needs were many in the middle of a busy day. Not only food, but also energy, patience, and discipline. Most of all, I needed a moment of God's peace before I started my afternoon. God meets us where we are, overburdened, tired, running on empty. Not only is God the provider of the gift of food at mealtimes, God is also the giver of renewed energy, contentment, and balance for the hours ahead. By quietly entering into God's presence, we offer a moment of gratitude and receive the peace God promises. And that's from Natalie Hall from Texas. And the thought for today is, I can enter into God's presence any time of day. And the prayer focus is on parents of young children. Let's pray. Father God, Remind us to pause and enter into your presence many times each day. As we offer our gratitude, may we receive the rest and peace you promise. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. I want us uh, to just all think for a second. And let's be honest with ourselves. This is not a quiz. This is not confession time. <clears throat> How many times a day do we set aside and enter into God's presence for a pause? Even for five seconds. Uh, I can tell you, uh, that I didn't do it today. Um, I didn't do it yesterday. Uh, we, uh, uh, we could all uh, learn a lesson from this devotion and at least attempt to start to practice a, a sacred pause. Um, you know, I guess uh, blessing the food tonight may qualify for that, but <clears throat> what I'm talking about is really setting aside some time. 
being quiet and knowing that he is God. <clears throat> All right, we're going to move on to day six. And the title of this devotion is Signs. And uh, here's a, a scripture that we all know, Proverbs 3, verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. <clears throat> on a beautiful fall day, I drove along a narrow, curving road on a mountain in North Carolina. As I began the descent, multiple signs, war, road signs warned, road worsens after truck ramp. I gripped the steering wheel, tapped the brakes, and prepared for the worst. But the next several miles did not get narrower or curvier. In fact, the road never worsened at all. At the foot of the mountain, I thought, those signs ruined my drive. Then I thought about the ominous signs I place in my own path, like the one that whines day worsens after lunch, or the one that warns life worsens after 60. Those signs ruin my day and invite fear into my life. I don't need those signs anyway. Jesus has given me the guidance I need. Just as the disciples dropped their nets and followed Jesus, I must drop my signs and follow him. With Jesus by my side, I can ascend the mountain of my fear and move forward despite obstacles. And with confidence in Jesus' love, I can find joy in my life's journey. And that was from Kay Ann Smith from Tennessee, and the thought for today is, what signs keep me from following Christ? And the prayer focus is to let go of negative thoughts. Let's bow our heads. Dear God, help us to trust you and rejoice in the journeys of our lives. Help us to let go of negative thoughts so that we can follow you. Amen. had a preacher uh, every Sunday when he uh, would ask for prayer requests and then he would ask for unspoken and <clears throat> everybody would raise their hand. And then he would uh, remind us that an open hand represented a, a release. You, you didn't, raise your hand in a fist like you were holding on to some money. You just raised your hand with an open palm and he uh, reminded us that, that signifies that we were letting go and we were letting God deal with that unspoken prayer, whatever it was. And it also reminded me of uh, how reluctantly or may maybe just the, the honest truth is how fearful we are to let uh, go of the control in our lives. Uh, we feel like we can fix things, work things out, uh, but really uh, we just need that faith uh, to trust the Lord with all of our heart uh, because he knows a lot better than we do. And I think we can all say amen to that. Okay, day seven, Thursday, October 1st, today, and the title is Changed, and the scripture comes from 2 Corinthians 5, 17, and it says, if, any, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, the new is here, and it says, when I became a Christian, I noticed many positive changes in my life. I became more joyful and peaceful. I started going to church and I enjoyed having fellowship with other believers. 
previously the Bible had seemed like any other book, but I started to love reading scripture, which had become alive to me. God became real and personal. I had truly become a new creation in Christ. Old things had passed away and all things had become new. Even my older brother noticed the changes and commented, surely there is such a thing as salvation. This girl has changed. As the years passed by, I continued to change as I grow in my faith and knowledge of Jesus Christ. People change us People change as they grow and experience new things. But God, the creator of all things, is dependable and trustworthy. What a blessing to know that God's love for us never changes. And that's from Charity M. Kira Jai area from Kampala, Uganda. Thought for the day, how has following Christ transformed me? And the prayer focus is those who have not heard the gospel. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for your steadfast love. Keep us, help us to continually change into the likeness of Jesus. As Jesus taught us, we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And that's from Matthew 6, 9 through 13. Amen. <clears throat> I can't help but uh, think about uh, the stories my buddy Jordan Williamson told me about him going on several missionary uh, journeys over and staying in uh, Kampala, Uganda. Uh, they, they provided a, uh, a PA system for the church over there that cost $2,000 and it was the nicest PA system for any church in the whole country. Of course, the church I'm talking about was a pole barn. I, and probably, it was open air uh, with either a thatch or a tin roof. That was their church. Uh, Jordan stayed in the nicest, ho nicest hotel there. Um, and the first class accommodations um, had a sink and a hole in the floor for a toilet. Uh, you, you, you were really, really special if, if you got a room that had a toilet in it. Of course, none of them had a seat. So it, it just makes me think about charity and her perspective on the gospel. I mean, I, I know that some of us, not me, I guess some of y'all, may have grown up in a house that didn't have electricity, but you probably, if you didn't, you probably know somebody who did. You, pro you may have grown up in a house that didn't have a bathroom, and if you didn't, you, you probably know somebody who did. But to me, uh, it's just kind of a different perspective on faith and, and the gospel and the privilege that they feel of that relationship with Jesus Christ. And, and I'm just afraid that too many times uh, in America today, we take that gift of salvation for granted. And I'm not pointing the finger and I'm not trying to make anybody feel bad. I just made me just, it just made me think about it. So uh, that is uh, the seven days. 
and uh, that's all I've got. So uh, if everybody will unmute themselves. Uh, I wonder if Joey's made it back home yet. Hey, look at Joey. Hey. I got to end the call because I'm talking to y'all here. The, the 488. Okay, the 488. I got you. Okay. Hello, everyone. Glad you made it back safely. You did bring Jana back with you. I did. She is in there <laughs> eating dinner now. So, what'd you fix her? Uh, chicken couscous. It's like a lemon butter chicken with couscous and oh, nothing well. else. Yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah. I don't know what's wrong with you. Yeah. Today is have potato soup. soup and cornbread like everybody else. So. <laughs> soup day. Yeah. Soup day. Didn't get the memo on that. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I, I was just curious. I just thought that if you had you had soup, there was there's something something in the water. Yeah. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> good. Okay. Does anybody have any thoughts on in, on who may have been muted on any of the devotion days or anything that crossed your mind or you wanted to share? Speak now. We have a new great grandson. His name is Braylon Lee Harborough, and he weighs six pounds, 10 ounces. And both of them are doing great. All right. Good. Good. Mm -hmm. Hargrave. Harbro. H A. No, it's Harbo. How do you say this? Harbro. It's like the coach. His last name. You know that coach Harbro. Okay. Well, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. How about that? That is great. Um, any other any other big announcements out there or thoughts on any of the devotions? Anybody want to share? Okay. Uh, just uh, I, I run down the prayer requests real quick. Billy Phillips, Harold Potter, Max Little, Jeff Blackwood, Melody Whitaker, Kurt Morris, David John Minton, Katie Bailey, Madge Robinson, Linda Farley, Joe Nichols, Helen Mitchell, Pat Nora Travelin, and Braven Lee Harbaugh. Any, any others we need to add to the list? <coughs> Appreciate everybody's prayers. Me and Jana will be traveling tomorrow. It's the first time we've been we've traveled since January. Um, we're going to Stone Mountain, Georgia. So just pray for good travels tomorrow. I appreciate it. Got a beautiful weekend. Yep. Have fun. Have fun. We will. It's a big, it's a big rock. It is. <laughs> we've been at the top of it several times. I've been there once, rode the train up there. Yeah. Yeah, you can hike up there. We haven't done that, so. We, uh, they, had, they had a Wild West shootout on the train. That was kind of cool. <laughs> I mean, I was probably 10, something like that. Yeah. So that's been a while. <laughs> All right. Joey and Jana Trim. It's just a one day thing. Hey, we'll be back tomorrow night. So okay. she's got to go to work on Saturday. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, okay. All right. Any other prayer requests? Any other prayer requests? All right. Uh, we'll uh, we'll go ahead and pray if that's all right with everybody. Then we'll have a little little discussion uh, afterwards. Uh, let's let's all bow our heads. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we uh, come before you tonight. Uh, Lord, we just 
thank you for, for all things. We, uh, uh, we thank you for the uh, words of the upper room, the scriptures that have been read, the prayers that we have offered. Lord, uh, help us uh, to uh, be ever mindful of what we can learn from uh, these devotions tonight. Lord, uh, help us to be uh, uh, more faithful followers. Lord, help us to uh, have a strong desire to be better in our walk uh, to follow you. Lord, we uh, offer all of these prayer requests and in particular, all of the unspoken prayer requests tonight that were not mentioned. We, uh, we do at this time, we, we open our hand and we let go of all of these. Uh, we give them over to you and, and we humbly ask and pray that, that your will be done over all these. Lord, we, uh, we ask that you forgive us where we failed you in the days past. Lord, we ask you to, to give us that strong desire uh, to be better tomorrow. Lord, I ask you to uh, find a way uh, to help us to get back together soon. But until that time, we'll do the best we can and uh, try to help and support one another uh, through these difficult times. Lord, we continue uh, to lift up all those that are suffering uh, because of this pandemic, whether it's illness or unemployment, financial burdens, depression, anxiety, whatever it may be uh, that people are struggling with today. Lord, we, we need your help. Uh, Lord, uh, please watch over us. Uh, give us strength and courage uh, to see us through these difficult times. For it's Jesus' precious name we pray tonight. Amen.